All right. Um, so yes, um, thanks Adam for joining me. Of course. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, so you were just talking about um, yeah, so the draft's on in a few days, right? Sure, yeah. Yeah, so um, but you're also grappling with some school requirements, right? Yes, sir. Graduating in the spring. Right. So I guess you gotta kind of prioritize things, right? So um, do you think football is going to come first for you or how are you approaching all this? Because um, I guess maybe an important thing to think about right now is like how much interest are there from NFL teams for your services? Do you know? Yes, sir. Yeah, so I mean, school is important. Obviously, I told my parents I'd come away with this with a degree. So that's okay. really – graduating and degree is important but I mean right now my focus is football this is my job at the moment this is right. where I think I can make some make a good impact in my life yeah both on the off field so I feel like this is where my priority is, is football okay right um so do you know whether you have much interest from NFL teams yes sir yeah I I, I definitely feel confident going in the day three of the draft um yep. whether that's you know, either in the sixth time of the round or if that's on judge free agent. I feel confident that by end of day three, I'll figure out where I'm going. Right. Yeah, so um, I identified you as um, the best long snapper in the draft that I saw. I, I must have seen tape on at least 20, 20 players. Um, unfortunately, you know, I, I, was, I was really excited because, you know, you seem to really support me in sharing long snapping tape because, like, as an average fan – you just don't really see it, right? No, of course. And it's important to me, too. I mean, it means a lot, for, you know, for people like you just to acknowledge the work I put in, and it, it just means a lot, you know. Mm. And this this draft, um, this draft cycle, um, just coming up to this draft, in, in terms of my scouting, this is the first time I have scouted special teams, but, you know, I have realized that it is just so important. And, Long snapping is just such a – you've got to have such a diverse skill set, right? Sure, yeah. So you've got to snap the ball either long or short, right? And then you've got to block. And then if it's on punting, you've got to disengage from the opposing team's block and get up field, get to the ball, and potentially make a tackle. For sure, yeah. It's, it's definitely a more complicated process than a lot of people definitely think it is, you know. Um, it's definitely something that, you know, even in high school, I wasn't expecting it to be such a big part of the game as I realized it was when I first got to campus at Wisconsin. Right. Yeah. I did notice that you were pretty highly touted out of high school. Like um, Cole, Cole's kicking camp seems to do a good job of putting shine on some special teams players. And you seem to be a highly touted prospect, right? Yeah. Yeah. They do a great job of kind of getting kids exposed to the next level. Um, definitely in high school and stuff, and they're definitely a group of guys that I kind of built relationships with, kind of, kind of took their advice, both through recruiting and technique-wise, and I kind of grew from there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I'll run the tape here, man. Um, I'll just share the screen. I'll just hope that uh, for sure that everything's running well. All right. So can you see um, what I see, Wisconsin versus Michigan? Sir. Okay. All right. So, yeah, so I just um, went through – obviously, I, I didn't get every snap that you took last season, unfortunately, but um, I got two and a half minutes. And it, I, I believe that it does show some of your ability, particularly the, 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 punting, the punting snaps, you know, that – that involves much more work for a long snapper, right? Yes, yeah. Right. So um, I've just highlighted you um, with the yellow circle here. Um, so I guess I just wanted to break down like different strategy strategies that you might have to think of um, when you come out. Um, so, sure. so you're in Michigan's territory to an extent. So the punter's just trying to get it downed 
play as close to the end zone as possible without going in the end zone. Does your does your strategy as a long snapper change at all, or it's pretty much the same as if you were here compared to say the your own five yard line? So yeah, I mean, I mean, a great philosophy that we kind of had at Wisconsin was you know snap first, block second, cover third. Um, right. Your snaps shouldn't really change. Um, you know, for this tape right here, it looks like we're on like the 37 yard line. So this is obviously a sky situation for our punter. He's just trying to get it down within the 10, 10, like 10 or shorter. Um, so we cover it. And, look, and I, and this red looks like Michigan isn't really in a heavy rush set. They're looking like in D safe. So, mm -hmm. I mean, kind of read that going out, please snap, please snap read. You kind of know that I'll probably be bigger bodies, kind of like a D safe. So you're working more D lineman on this type set. You know, yeah. it's four from three as well. So, I mean, they're probably trying to cover and take account for a possibility of a fake, kind of okay. like a direct or right. uh, whatever, whatever okay. we had game plan. Um, but for this, it's really, yeah, like like every every snap the same. Snap first, make sure the snap's good. And then for me, being a pro style set in college, it was block second, cover your A gap, whatever, assignment, the PP, number 34, Mason Saki, assigned me to. And then covering once they get those first two done. Right. Wow. There's a lot of terminology there that I'm not actually familiar with. Um, yeah. So I guess it's just like uh, another question I want to ask is how much how much do you work with just the the um, like the entire squad as far as just you know thing thing like do you work with the O line as far as picking up blocking assignments and things like that. We ran punt almost every day in practice. That was a special teams unit that we definitely focused a lot on in Wisconsin. We take a lot of pride in our punt unit. We play a lot of our defensive and offensive starters out there, guys who can compete and play on the edges. Um, we, we really take pride in it. And it was something we'd always do every day and walk through. And we do it in during season every Tuesday and Thursday or around something like that um, during season. And this is something that you kind of build that chemistry with and it's just repetition in fall camp spring ball, summer ball. Um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of like a golf swing, kind of just repetition, getting, getting used to what you're going to do. Right, okay. And, yeah, I, I didn't think that, yeah, you've also got to train for potentially um, some fakes, which, I mean, you guys, in this situation, you guys are up 28 to 3, so running a fake might be an unnecessary risk. But, you know, you've got to practice snapping the ball off to your short right side or something, right? Yes, sir, yep. Mm. Yeah. All right. Um, so, yeah, so I'll just run the tape and um, so you're just trying to get to the ball here once you get past some blocks. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah they did a great job. Our cover unit did a great job of getting down to the ball before mm -hmm. me. Um, you know, I, I'm not the fastest guy on the field, but Kind of my responsibilities are in the core group. It's kind of like a gunner on both ends. Kind of knows of the ball, knows of the returner. Go try and yep. deploy. Right. Right. So this is a, a field goal. So that didn't quite make it, but um, yeah. So with the field goal your job is just to snap the ball and, and then try and get upright, but with enough leverage to make blocks because guys can come through. Do the, is it still termed as the A-gap? Um, yeah, I you, know this year there was, a, there was a new rule about the A-gap in college football. Yeah. Um, however, you know, you still felt pretty good pressure on the inside. And for me on short snaps is obviously the snap. Getting the snap down there with the perfect laces or laces out at least eighths um, is really important. Um, I took a lot of pride in that this year in the offseason to try to fix that. Right. And really, for me, it's just kind of staying down with a good base, but kind of leaning to the side where I feel like there was the most pressure. So if you look at Iowa, they had a six down lineman on the right side. So that was the side that we kind of prioritized putting mm -hmm. my leverage to. Right. I, I didn't even think of that as far as I, – I thought maybe the holder is the most responsible for lace placement, but you're conscious of that as well. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I definitely think laces start with a snapper. Okay. Um, obviously, a good holder helps, especially the bail you out of situations where you might have the ball, maybe quarter turn. 
I mean, worst case scenario, the laces are back. But, I mean, luckily we didn't have to deal with that this year. But, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's really just getting that chemistry, their holder, and making sure that you guys are both the equal distance apart before the snap. You know, I, we kind of had a routine at Wisconsin where it looks like on this play, it probably looks like we're at the, like, 30, 29-yard line. Um, and so for this one, I'd yell four. So every five-yard increments, we got zero, which is – the base five yard line, then one, two, three, four, zero. And for this, that's where the ball was. It looks like it looks like it has four. So I'd yell four, 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 running out there to the holder, which means that he has to go back to the two, eight yards behind. It just like 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 the uh -huh. punt kind of a lot of repetition, kind of getting that chemistry, their holder. Yeah. So it's like, you know, the, you you've played in some huge games as well, because Wisconsin's a pretty big time school. So um, you, you've, I guess you've just got to be, go out there and just it's got to be sort of um, muscle memory and just on automatic because you could, when there are crowds, you know, and, and, and the spotlight, like that, that might overwhelm you if you're not, like, prepared, right? Oh, for sure, yeah. I mean, and it's weird too, you know, like I kind of go out there and most snaps, I usually don't even hear the crowd. It's kind of weird. I kind of, kind of just seems like everything goes silent and kind of, I don't even remember right. the play, to be honest with you. Like, like you said, it kind of becomes muscle memory. Right. Um, all of a sudden, I realize the play's over, and it's like, well, I hope I did. You know, like, right. I job, you know, I'm running off field. But there are times where you kind of feel that pressure. I mean, I mean, one clip is that Minnesota overtime clip. And even though it was an empty stadium, you kind of mm. felt that pressure on you. Um, mm. Same like games like the Rose Bowl, where you know there's millions of people watching. Yeah. Um, just other games like that, but I, I, you know, kind of, I kind of love it because it kind of builds confidence in you as you go. Yeah, for sure. And you know, playing the NFL, um, yeah, you've got to be ready for that stage, right? Yes, sir. Yep. Hmm. All right. So, yeah, this is that same rep. This is a punt rep. And this is where you recover. Yes, sir. So just getting to the ball and securing it. That must have been yeah. a good feeling because, you know, you might not necessarily um, be able to make plays where, you know, number 51 shows up, right? So. Sure, yeah. And I remember this play so vividly. I mean, I felt like seeing that ball on the ground last 20 seconds. I saw right. up on the ground, no one was near it. It just stopped and. I was just remember telling myself, man, just dive on it. Don't don't do anything extra. Don't do anything special. Just get okay. the ball in your hand. Yeah, right. I wonder if you drill that. Like, how do you deal with a loose ball? Do you do you, do you practice on that at all? So that's the thing. Is like you know, we practice this maybe four times in my lifetime at Wisconsin. You know, you don't really mm. have a snapper. You don't really think that you're the guy that's going to be downfield making that play on a muff punt um right. but I mean luckily I mean I played some defense in high school and I kind of, I kind of trusted myself just knew I just need to fall on that ball I just knew I right. need to make a safe kind of dive slash throw on the ball and just yeah. cradle it um I kind of knew I was the open field and that was also a big thing I was kind of like like wow this is really it like it felt so slow with the time of it yeah it like, wow I'm really like is this really about to happen I just gotta make I just gotta do what I gotta do Right. I might just – all right, so ball comes out. Yeah, so you've got, like, uh, five five yards to cover here. And, um, yeah, you've just got to be conscious of the Iowa guys getting to the ball because you see a lot of the times that the ball is loose at all levels. You know, the ball will pop out even if a guy does manage to get there first. So, Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I was just really focused on just getting that ball into my cradle and yeah, yeah. I've noticed. Um, so long snappers don't tend to. It's hard to evaluate a long snapper um, based on statistics. Whereas you know other players, you know passing yards, that sort of thing might be an indicator of a player's value. So how how. It, like lo evaluating a long snapper, do you believe it is just entirely based on um, on the eye, the eye test? Um, I think it plays a big role. Um, 
I do I do think that being the best athlete they could be helps out greatly. But at yeah. the end of the day, I do feel like you also have to get your job done. Um, you know, I see a lot of guys in the league that span from, you know, and I'm not even going to judge anyone because they're they're at the next level, and I'm who who am I to say that they aren't athletic? You know, right. Um, but like you see guys like Luke Rhodes that are just these specimens of athletes, and you see guys that aren't necessarily up to that physical look. You know, probably right. strong dudes. You know, but you know, I you know I heard from a good coach. You know that like. Like, if you could snap the ball and block, if you could do your job, it doesn't matter how athletic you are. Mm-hmm. You know, um, right. You I'm, know I, I, mean? I, I, I want to ask, who, who, who do you think is the best snapper in the NFL and who is considered the best snapper of all time? Because uh-huh. this sort of thing just never gets talked about. Yeah, and that, that's, that's the weird thing, too, is that there's so many guys that I never really thought about I never really thought about truly like who was the best of all time. I kind yeah. of, if I'm being honest with you, I kind of, I kind of didn't really pay attention to long snappers in the league until about three or four years ago. I didn't, I just, I was more focused on just starting off in college and trying to build a name for myself there. Um, mm. You know, uh, I'd say the best right now in the league, there's a, there's so many of them. Um mm. There's so many that I can name off the top of my head. I, I do really like watching Luke Rhodes play just because of how athletic he is and how different he's changing the game. Um, you know, you strive to be as athletic as him. I mean, I don't think anybody will ever be at the snapping position, at least in a, in a while, will be as athletic as Luke Rhodes for the Colts. Okay. Um, but he's really setting a standard for a new kind of par with the game. Okay. Right. Well, I'll make sure to pay more attention – yeah, I, unfortunately, so I've I feel like I've, I've evaluated most NFL players, but I've actually haven't evaluated the special teams. So that that's going to be the next step for me is really sure. studying studying that. Um, so as far as so have you and your or your agent or people have they have you analyzed like what teams might need long snappers and and maybe are there a dozen teams that might be looking for one and that might give you an idea of how in demand you might be for sure yeah you definitely look at teams that have a need you know salary cap's a big thing it seems like Mm -hmm. Uh, you know there really is only 32 spots in the world for it yeah give or take some guys on practice squads with the covid year and everything and extended practice squads but i mean it's all about timing it's all about and it's all about just competing your ass off i'm being honest with you right right you know yeah you're fighting yeah. to take some job and they're fighting to keep you out of their job. Yeah, right. So that's why, you know, you messaged me yesterday saying that you're coming back from a workout and that must be like a daily a daily routine you've got just trying to keep in shape, right? For sure, yeah. And that's why I'm back home in Arizona, just back with my family. Um, they're doing a great help with me, helping with meal planning and stuff. I was set up with a great nutritionist by my agent. Um, it was actually his brother. He runs a great nutrition program. Right. You know, I work out with a bunch of guys here that a group of guys that was an old strength coach in my high school. And I'm actually trained by one of our old football players from our high school. Um, Joey Counts, he's doing a great job. He played at University of Montana. Um, and, you know, I mean, honestly, he just busts, he just busts my ass every day. And <laughs> in the language, and, like, he just, he kills me, <laughs> you right. know, but in a good way, you need it. Um, I need to be treated like a regular position player. Right. Um, you know, I, I don't like the mindset that specialists have of protecting your body or whatnot. You're, you're a football player just like everybody else out there. Right. And that's where I wanted to make a difference in the culture, I, I guess, of specialists at Wisconsin was to kind of get into the weight room, kind of be more of an active part of the team, not be this isolated group of specialists, but rather be guys that could lift with linebackers and whatnot. Right. And, and that does bring up a, something I wanted to ask you. You, you, so you bring up linebackers and, and you, I would say that your like physical profile might indicate that you could play linebacker and you mentioned that you did play defense in high school. So, and, you know, I, I've evaluated you as the best long snapper in the draft because you do have an ability to disengage from blocks and, and block. So how do you think, c- could you play snaps at linebacker? 
Um, at the at the next level, I don't really personally see myself playing snaps at the next level. Um, yeah. however, I mean, I do wish I played or tried at least a little bit to try to get in there, at least on the other special teams in Wisconsin. But you know, they want to protect me, and I understand that. And yeah, and you know, I, you know, there, there's guys that are good at what they do, and I was there the snap, and that's where I kind of saw my just saw myself fall, and I was kind of happy with it. I was kind of happy with being the long snapper there, but. But like yeah. I said, I mean, I didn't want to just be a long snap. I wanted to train with guys that were linebackers. I wanted to run with guys that were that were fast. You know, I didn't want to put myself under the bus. I guess. Right. Yeah. And what I realized about long snappers is that if your team is playing well and you're scoring a lot of touchdowns, then you're going to be on the field um, because they'll be kicking units. And then if your team's not going so well and there's a lot of punting, then you're going to be on the field. So really that's where the long snappers have a lot of value because you are taking a fair few snaps per game. Right. And whereas a punter might not see the field the whole, the whole game. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's really staying ready. You know, you never even know about pick sixes or, you right. know, stuff so unexpected. One second you're on the bench kind of talking up with your friends, watching the game. Yeah. You know, saying those about everything, but then the next second you see your your buddy get a pick six and you're scrambling to find your helmet to get ready and you kind of right. get in. I want to say cold, yeah. but you kind of got to flip that switch real quick to kind of be like, all right, let's let's do this. You know. Right. Yeah. I'll roll the tape again. All right. So. So. I, so this player in front of you looks like he's Russian. So you've got to be aware of that, but still execute, right? Yeah, and at this point in the snap, I actually never saw him run up. You know, yeah. I kind of looked at the holder the whole snap, kind of being down in my stance. I kind of get a pre-snap read, kind of like the Michigan film or the film we just watched. There's a six-down lineman on the left, so I'm going to prioritize my gap, but I'm still going to get big. I'm still going to keep a good, strong base. And luckily, kind of tried to bring that guy in on a late loop, and and like and like I said too, the NCAA added a new rule where you have to be out of the A gaps, so it kind of yeah. made my job a lot easier, um, my senior year, in the A gaps. But I mean, you still got to protect where you can't can't put all your faith into rules, you know. Right. Yeah. So do you think this guy fake rushing might have distracted the kicker a little bit and affected the kick? Um, I don't think so. I think Lars does a pretty good job of keeping his eyes down on the ball. Um, I just, I just don't know what happened there. I'm gonna be honest with you. Yeah, it happens. Exactly. I suppose. I mean, we kind of normalize guys hitting from you know 50 yards. That was a 46 yard attempt. It's still a fair way. Yep. Like kicking from 46 yards. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. We did, we did a lot of kicks this year, a lot of kick attempts. He did a great job at it, um, stepping up. He's gonna have he's gonna have a way better year next year too. He's just getting better and better with time. Right. Oh, this is that clutch. See, <laughs> that guy did go over that gap, didn't he? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. You can't put your faith in. You can't put your faith in all of the scores, you know. Now, this one's borderline because he's lined up in the beat or, like, kind of like a kind of nose, like a kind of a nose on the guard. Um, yeah. Kind of died, but it's still one of those where you kind of see last second and you're kind of like, all right, let's flip them, you know. Okay. And especially when guys leave their feet, I kind of love that. That's one of my favorite plays as a long snapper because, you know, they leave their feet and that, you know, just with physics, if you grab their legs, you can flip them over. Yeah, and that's like a pancake, right? Like it's a bit of a highlight for your for your position. Yeah, it's just fun to do. Just fun just to know that they're going to hit the ground pretty hard, not expecting yeah. it. And then they're probably less likely to do it next play. Exactly, which is what happens to him. But right. this is a great. This is a great moment. This is one of my highlights. I, I'd say of my career. This play right here. All right, I'll just play it again. Um, yeah, so. Beautiful. <laughs> All right, so, uh, yeah. so this is a more heavy um, rushing set from um, Wake Forest, right? Trying to get to the punter. 
Yeah, so they're still in their D. It looks like they're still in their D safe, but they're kind of bringing more of a rush or kind of wanting to challenge the the operation a little bit. Okay. Yeah, so you're getting back to block, which is uh, I really value that in in my evaluations because there's no point getting upfield if the punt is the, the punt gets blocked. You know. Oh, 100%. I agree. I mean, I definitely think that the pro style set's probably the best, safest route in college football. And even the pros, that's why you don't see pro teams running spread style punts. You see you see them running the, the shield punt, the kind of the closer gap, A gap, B gap pressure. Um, I just think the pro style punt's probably the best route to ever go in regards to that. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right, so this is a more spread out front from yeah. Wade. This is more of a this is more of a rush. Like this is more of a straight rush where they're going to be bringing a lot of pressure. You know, it looks like this is a nine man. I want to say this is a nine man front. Yeah, they don't even have a guy on the gunner on the left hand side. And mm -hmm. so on these nine man calls, you 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 expect all out. You got nine men. You have nine defenders on eight blockers, and that means you just got to kind of get big. You got to hold your ground and. If everybody does their assignments, clogs up the gaps. There's no way that they can get out, get over there. Um, right. So it looks like if I think my counting's right, I want to say this was a red call. This would be a red call for us, a right side heavy block. Okay. But it, for us, rules that didn't change. I kind of snap and block straight back and let things sort themselves out. Okay. Do you think the gunner has to? I, I don't know. See, I, I haven't really. Um, Again, like, I guess I, I, as an amateur scout, I learn about football from sort of the media talking about different um, facets of play. But I, this, I've never heard anyone talk about this. Should the, should the gunner in this situation like, call an audible essentially and come into block or just go with the game plan? So, yeah. So, uh, for us, we see a 10-man. So, say that bottom left-hand gunner is creeping in. That's yeah. when we call on our gunners to kind of take a quick one step and then release, you know, getting okay. the punt off the main thing. Uh, we'd love to have guys out there in coverage. If I believe from my memory from Wake Forest, this guy on the top, kind of the guy off the line of scrimmage near the 30-yard marker, yeah. I think he drops out and he tries to catch up with the gunner. Okay. So I think we kind of recognize that. I mean, if you look at demeanor too, you see that those two or three A-gap guys within the first – within the guard – within the guard set for us right. – they seem pretty corked in. They seem pretty down to the grass. And so that mm -hmm. looks like that they're going to bring a heavy rush in the inside. And same with 20, 20, 22, whatever that guy is on the on the bottom left. Not the gunner, but the guy down there. So everyone's kind of That's put good. in the ground besides the guy on the far right. So it looks like everybody's yep. bringing in that eight-man rush with that guy falling out. But I, that's, I mean, that's what it looks like pre-snap here. Yep. I remember the play right. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah, 29 pulled out. I enjoy watching you play just because you do have to deal with a fair bit of attention, you know, so it's, it's like it's like a, a wave is coming in and you're just sort of trying to stay with a good foundation, right? Exactly, yep. You kind of just got to yeah. hold big. You got to understand your opponents. You got to understand that you're probably not the biggest guy you're going up against. Right. You probably don't have the size, but lower, lowest guy wins and just kind of put your foot in and embrace the two-second hold, you know, and just embrace right. the contact. Yeah. I get – I watch a lot of, um, you know, like there's some – obviously some great defensive tackles in the league and often 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 guys who are in the starting rotation uh, on the defensive line do come in to try and block kicks like a Shelby Harris um, yeah. so yeah I mean that, that must be it must be exciting but I guess you want to prepare as much as possible going up against a guy a guy like Shelby Harris or some of these great defensive tackles right for sure yeah I mean 
And that's the thing, too, is you see, like, guys like Damian Clowney on punts on the inside, rushing snappers, you know, and yeah, and it's like, wow, you know, like, <laughs> growing up watching him, you're like, you never thought that you would be going against guys that are paid to attack a quarterback, you know. Right. But that's your goal, you know. Your punter's your quarterback. You got to protect them and kind of got to mm. – I do think – Tech technique is so important, right? Oh, 100 percent. I think footwork's important. You know, your snap itself is important. Um, yeah, well, that's all snapping is. It's repetition. It's technique. Right. Um, I noticed there's another draft eligible long snapper, Jack Probes, that Probes out of um, Ole Miss. Yep. And he he's he's like 200 pounds or something. I thought that he he I think he. While I don't think he's as good as you, I think he might have a place in the league. Um, and, you know, he he's doing so as a guy who's not huge, you know. So that's where, like, yeah, technique does um, – can still make you a quality player. 100%. I agree 100%. Yeah. Um, so the punt. You can hear your shoulder pads – you, you hear the shoulder pads um, hit against the, the blocker there? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for that, it was kind of a D safe. You know, we saw a lot of teams this year go D safe with us. Um, we're kind of in those shorter fringe areas where we could run a fake, and they just want to make sure that we're not going to. Um, so that means there's only like five or six guys rushing against eight. And so that yeah. means I can kind of get out and cover faster. Yeah. Trusting the other athletes on the field, but – Right. do their job but i mean if he's standing there i'm gonna give him a little chip yeah i'd say you are here so you've already got past one guy and now this guy's just yeah and you get on his you get on his right shoulder and kind of dip your right shoulder which helps with um getting past the block for sure yeah yeah i mean and that's what we worked a lot too you know i'm really grateful for my coach coach herring at Wisconsin, we really worked a lot on practice drills. You know, unlike most specialists, I kind of go inside, kind of mess around. You know, he kind of kept me out there, treated me like a, a regular position player and worked on drills, whether that was footwork, release drills, blocking, hand striking. I mean, he did a really good job with keeping me busy, and it, and it paid off. Right. Well, that's why I think maybe you could have some snaps at linebacker because you've got skills that would translate over to that. But. For sure, Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it'd be fun, but I'm not going to get my hopes up. Right. <laughs> Dang, Andy. So... With when I, I looked at some of the, your Coles kicking camp footage and you, I still think like for me to get a really good idea of how good a long snapper is, I've got to see them play in a real game. Um, whereas maybe a punter, you can still you can sort of observe technique because they don't have to engage with other players on the field as much as as you do. Um, but I did notice in the Coles kicking camp, you'd snap the ball and you would have like good technique in getting back while still staying with um, a good, good base. And I think this rep sort of shows that. So do you think um, when you're evaluating a long snapper, you really should be looking at the actual game film? Yeah, I think really? game film where it, where it shines. Um, mm -hmm. I think anybody could snap in a controlled kind of quiet environment. Yeah. Um, I really love Cole's kicking and like Coach Downer and stuff. I, I love him to death. But I mean, you train there so you can perform on the field. And um, yeah. and I think, you know, I, and you can run however fast you run at your pro day. You can be as strong as you can be at your pro day. You know, you can have all these numbers. But at the end of the day, can you play ball? Can you go out there and put your helmet on another guy's helmet and kind of embrace that impact, embrace that kind of grittiness of being on in the interior and that's that's where I take pride of myself is kind of you know I may not be the fastest on paper the strongest on paper you know but I went to a school that prides themselves in hard work and they're you know you don't want to 
mess with guys in a dark alley that are from Wisconsin, in my opinion. Right. These we're, we're trained where these are guys that are just going to come in for 60 minutes and pound you into the dirt. And um, right. that's the culture I loved about Wisconsin. And, and that's where I feel like I'd put my cards and put my money against anybody else in this draft is, you know, and, you know, like you could have all these variables, but at, at, a, at the end of the day, you know, realistically, I'm, I walked in, in a pro style set for four years in the Big Ten and snow, mm-hmm. rain, playing in all weather, you know, and I think that speaks volume to my mm-hmm. stock. However, however, you know, I believe that, but I just got to have that one team to take a chance on me. Yeah. And you you did go a long way to go to school at Wisconsin because you are from Arizona, right? Where it's, as, as it's quite sunny generally. <laughs> yeah. It's a nice day. It's like 88 today. So right. it's a good nice day today. Yeah. Yeah, so here's where you just backtrack and then get upfield. Oh. A, yeah, so I guess what would be your evaluation of what went wrong with this blocking set? So, uh, so what happened with this play is we – so we had Jack Van Dyke, our freshman, out there. And so I'm actually – so there's actually a play clock kind of in the back but underneath my legs. So we kind of went out there with nine seconds left, if I remember, eight or nine seconds. And, um, and so we're kind of in that fringe area where we need the kick. We don't really have – we don't really have good leg strength outside of that range. Yep. Um, so I'm looking at the shot. I'm looking at the play clock behind my legs and right at two seconds, I snapped it. And right as I snapped it, that was right when my holder turned around and it was just kind of a, okay. like we kind of, we kind of trained for this, but I don't think, I don't think the operation was ready for it. Um, okay. So I snapped before the penalty. Um, right, right as I turned, so right as I saw his face mask turn, that's when I snapped it. And um, Okay. Right. I, that's another thing that I didn't think about, that you guys actually have to get a play off. You know, I just – it's just something I never thought about. Yeah, and we were, and we were taught the – just give it a shot, give it a chance, you know. And yeah. um, and so, you know, like at two seconds when I saw his face mask turn around, that's when I snapped it. At least just give Jack a chance to kick. But it looks like, he, you know, they were taking – Jack took his sweet time. You know, he's a little fresh and then he, he kind of knew in the situation. Right. Um, but – yeah, this is probably the most hectic situation I've been in in a game. But, I mean, it's kind of good that it happened. Right. And it is in, incredibly impressive that you're a four-year starter. So you came in as a, what, 18, 19-year-old, and you were starting for Wisconsin. That's big time. <laughs> yeah. I remember Nick Bosa, my A-gap um, in the Big Ten Championship my freshman year. Yeah. Uh, kind of over the guard, but still the fact going out there and seeing them lined up in the A-gap, you're kind of like, wow, like I'm an 18-year-old going against probably, you know, the first or second pick in the draft this year. Yeah, yeah. And I, I like, you know, there's a bunch of great athletes in the NFL, but Nick Bosa's biceps certainly stand out. So it's like... <laughs> yeah, no, he wasn't, he wasn't a small human being when I went out there. It was definitely one of those eye... You know, it's kind of one of those experiences right now. They're kind of like a movie. You're like, what? Like, damn. Like, this is what I'm about to go against. Right. I guess moments like that is where, you know, hard work, hard work is, is my foundation for getting here. So I belong here as well, right? For sure. Yeah. And exactly. And and luckily, you know, luckily I had guard help, you know, and everything. But yeah. it's just one of those kind of cool little accolades I could kind of tell myself that, you know, that's my part of my resume. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm asking you a lot of questions, but uh, so your guards to either side are, are they specialists as well, or do they also are they also training as linebackers, tight ends, fullbacks, that sort of yeah. thing? Yeah, so these linemen are all offensive linemen. These are all guys that play on the offensive front. Um, oh, they true. Kind of, okay. Yeah. You know, they're kind of out here after a long drive, so they're kind of just ready to kind of get this play rolling and kind of get on the sideline and reevaluate what happened that drive, you know, but. They do a great job, you know. They take pride in this, just like they do in any any other offensive play. Um, 
we worked on this. You know, Coach Rudolph really works hard with them, kind of working on their steps and the inside. Um, it's a very organized unit that a lot of people don't think that is as organized as they thought. Right. Yeah. But you have to develop chemistry with a bunch of guys then because it's a different unit for um, punting because guys have to get upfield and make tackles and offensive linemen might not necessarily be um, equipped to do that. Yeah, for sure. And, and that's the cool thing too. And that's what I loved about my position is I made a lot of friends, you know, and I pride myself on being a good locker room guy, kind of being someone that could be everybody's friend, you know, talk yep. to, uh, I, you know, I'm very outgoing. I, I, I could talk to anybody and kind of building relationships with those guys. I was really close to the whole offensive line. I was close with all the linebackers and whoever was in the punt. Yep. Um, made sure that, you know, we're on the same page, you know. You know, if they had questions about the unit, they'd talk to me. If I had questions about blocking, I'd talk to them. Um, right. Kind of work can. Yeah. yeah, I feel like in anything, it's just collaboration. An effective exactly. collaboration creates good results. For sure. And we, you know, my four years there, we never had a blocked field goal. And so we take a lot of pride in what we do yep. on this year. Do you think NFL scouts might evaluate that statistic they might see that and say okay well he's incredibly consistent in doing his role not to let that happen yeah I mean I mean I'd love to love to add that to my statistic line but at the end of the day too there's 10 other guys out there and there's eight others that are out there mm. um you know kind of do holding down the line too you know yeah. I, I'm in part of my a gap you know, but it, I, I really feel like the field goal unit's all, it's all kind of one collective unit, I guess. I mean, I, same with punt, but I want to take all that credit. That's, right. that's what I'm trying to yeah, say. Yeah, there's a lot of variables, but, and that's why I think stats can be a little bit misleading. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so, yeah, the clock's counting down. Yeah, I guess the edge didn't really block too well yeah and they brought a lot of guys heavy in that a gap over my left guard so i kind of just had to hold number one and kind of bring them down to the ground okay <laughs> yeah the clock there's two yeah that two yeah i mean it's not a hugely critical kick by the look of it because of the score but i'm trying to do as well yeah. as i can each, each yeah, I just remember that play going out there. We didn't know who we were running with, what kicker, if it was Lars or Van Dyke. Right. Um, it was kind of hectic, but yeah. yeah, it was. It's not like it was a big time situation. Right. Um, I think this is the final um, bit of tape that I've put together. And I really think that this rep sort of shows your whole, like a lot of your skill set. So you're disengaging from a block and then you've got to disengage from another. And then you can see that, so I, I, if, if you can see the ball at this point, are you seeing, okay, so this guy's got a little bit of um, so, some steam behind him because he's escaped the first tackle, right? So that you sort of, you, you become a bit more aware that you need to be in the right spot. Yeah, and so we kind of do game prep too. Uh, if I believe, if I still remember correctly, um, number 33, I believe it was from Mike Forrest, who's a more side-to-side -side player on punt. Okay. Because you have some guys that just catch and they hit that gap straight forward, and you have guys that like to dance around and go side-to-side. -side. Right. And um, you kind of game plan for that. But, I, I, yeah, so you see the for our first gunner miss. Um. And he's trying to go right. So, I mean, you start kind of working right, but you still want to keep leverage to the left just in case he cuts right back. Okay. Right. See, there's a lot of game study that you have to do as well, right? Yeah. And I feel like that's where, you know, some snappers, I feel like that's where I feel like I kind of hold strong too is my game study. Um, I think in the pro style, you kind of do got to do your film. These are going against guys, you're blocking guys. It should be treated just like if you're an offensive lineman going against a defensive lineman, you you break down your opponent. Right. And I'm, it, I mean, it makes your job easier on game day. You kind of know what you're going against. Even as yeah. simple as knowing this, whoever it is, you know, 
if like 33 for Wake Forest, you know, are they a straight forward down the hole guy? You're going to have to meet them one on one in the in in a in a small window. Mm-hmm. Or are you going to kind of have to play it slower and kind of force use your sidelines to your advantage and use your help? Right. So you come into frame here. So what I observed is that you're in a perfect position that if he did break this, you might have been one of the last lines of defense, but you would have been there to make a tackle and, and you do get, you kind of <laughs> make contact with him. So Yeah, I'm just trying to stop my body at that point. Right. I'm trying not to get the penalty and just kind of dip to the side. Right. All right, so that's the tape. Um, that's awesome. Thank you so much for making that too. Hey, well, you know, hopefully, um, you know, you, you make you make some plays in the NFL, and then you know people will be looking up. Oh, I wonder if there's some college tape, and there it is. You know, sure. Yeah, and and again, like I could name you. I could name a handful of long snaps in the NFL and I'm like a huge NFL fan, you know, so, and I'll probably end up putting together some long snapping tape of NFL guys just because they need, <laughs> because I want to, I want to get a good understanding of how good every player in the NFL is. And, and, and that dictates, uh, dictates like results. So if you want to be like an NBA, an NBA bet, betting on NBA games, um, if, if you know that there's a really good long snapper, then maybe that influences your decision to bet on a team or not. It, it, like, we can't just be ignoring the position because, you know, it's, it's like as far as field position and getting points on the board, like your position is so important. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, I mean, I definitely, I'm definitely all for recognition for long snappers. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, and it's one of those positions, too, that you kind of got to be comfortable and okay with kind of being the low-key character on the team, you know? Yeah. I think it's a good thing if people don't know who you are because that means you're not messing up. And if right. you are, if your name is getting talked about, it should be for the right reasons. Right. And there's still opportunities for you to make some pretty decent money uh, in the NFL, right? So that's exactly. also an extra incentive. It's always a plus, yeah. But, I mean, came this far, and I want to see how far I could take this thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Good luck for the draft, which is only in um, what two days time. Yes, sir. Starts in two days. Saturday will be the day that I probably hear something. Okay. Yeah. Well. Um. Yeah. Thanks again for taking the time. Um. It seems like you have a busy schedule, and good luck with your schoolwork as well. And uh, oh, hopefully, I see your name called. But I'm very confident that you can um, make your presence known in the NFL. Thank you, sir. That means a lot. Yeah. Thank you for having me. It means a lot. Yeah, so I'll just um, I'll just uh, yeah, upload this video as soon as I can, and um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully the world can see it and admire and and because I, I haven't seen much special teams breakdown, so I think this can be very helpful for the scouting community to understand what you have to um under go through you know in every sure. facet of yeah. football. Yeah, this is awesome to talk to. I just love talking the game. Yep. Um, me too. It's yeah, like you said, there's not a lot of talk about it and stuff, and kind of help bring a little bit more awareness, whatever it is, to the long time community. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Adam. Best of luck. Um, I'll be keeping tabs of your career, and you know, if if you want, I can um, if you get some NFL tape together, I can put that together, and then maybe we can break that down as well at some point if you For want. Sure. For sure. Yep. That's okay. the goal. All right. All right. Thanks, Adam. Best of luck. Goodbye.